All right, today we're going to talk about the separatist. Uh, the separatists wanted to separate from the Anglican Church. Now, the time period that we're talking about is uh, the early 1600s. And uh, they were the first uh, to settle in what became New England. And one of the reasons we're talking about, I mean, before we talked about Virginia, And now we're talking about New England, and, and you probably know enough history to know that these the, the New England colonies, such as Massachusetts, and where you find Boston, and of course Virginia, these are colonies that played an integral integral part uh, in the American Revolution. Uh, so again, the separatists wanted to separate from the Anglican Church that was led by James uh, the First. And so they left, and eventually, uh, I mean, originally they went uh, to the Netherlands. All right. Now, they didn't like the Netherlands very much. They spoke Dutch, uh, and they felt that the Dutch were a little bit more um, liberal in their religious beliefs. They partied, for example, on the Sabbath and everything, and they were afraid that their, their children would assimilate into Dutch culture, and they couldn't get a lot of uh, really good jobs there. Uh, so they decided uh, to head to the New World, and uh, they were they got assurances uh, from again James the first that they would not be persecuted in the New World. They were going to head uh, to Virginia. Now, James the first, I mean, the way he looked at it was that well, uh, the separatists uh, didn't want to be in England. They didn't want the separatists to be in England. Uh, the separatists did, didn't want to be there because they were persecuted. Uh, but, in, you know, so we need settlers in Virginia. Everybody wins. Well, um, they, uh, in 1620, uh, they left on uh, the Mayflower. And um, they left with 101 passengers. Now, of course, uh, going across the Atlantic Ocean, all right, is very dangerous. Uh, and they prayed before they left. And uh, maybe the prayers uh, worked because only one person died on the voyage. So they left with 101. One person died. So they arrived with 101. Um, yes, I did say that right. So they left with 101. One person died and they arrived with 101 because someone gave birth uh, to a little boy uh, who they unfortunately, I guess for him, named Oceanus. Now, the thing is, is that uh, they were very happy to see land and they pretty much la they landed over there off of Cape Cod, uh, which was way off course uh, from Virginia. Uh, but um, they knew they were out of their uh, jurisdiction. Uh, so the uh, men uh, got together, I think it was maybe 44 men, I'm not really sure, got together and they signed, all right, or maybe it was 40, let me see, let me look at my, my notes here, I have some notes around here, um, Yes, actually, it was 41. 41 men signed the Mayflower Compact. Now, this was not a written constitution. And listen to what I'm saying right here. This was not a written constitution. It was simply a promise, uh, you know, to obey, to obey God's laws. These were very religious people. Uh, but also to obey the laws made by men or made by the leaders. And the leaders would be all right, chosen, okay, uh, by the group. In other words, um, they would be voted on, all right, and this is, what, again, what we call democracy. It wasn't a pure democracy. Women couldn't vote, of course, uh, but uh, this was very, very progressive. I mean, this, this, you know, this idea of choosing leaders, all right, was very progressive at that time, we're talking about the early 
1600s. All right, these are places that people, you know, they're they're coming from a place where there is a king, uh, there's nobility. You know, these are, um, you know, back then, you know, people talk about today, you know, say the, the top 1% of uh, the income bracket in uh, in the United States, you know, and they talk about the 99% or, or whatever. I can I can tell you people that are in, that are te that are history teachers are definitely not, all right, in the top 1%, but uh, nonetheless, you know, back then, um, you you became king because of, you know birth your birthright, but also the aristocracy, all right, the nobility. Also, it didn't matter what they did, all right. They were just part of the nobility. Now, uh, so this idea of choosing leaders, all right, was was really in many ways radical uh, at that time. And of course, um, you know, we kind of talked a little bit about where some of that comes from in terms of uh, religion. Uh, we talked about uh, Calvinism, you know, Luther, this idea of the priesthood of all believers. Um, and uh, so you have that belief system, uh, plus um, you're going somewhere that is completely new, all right? You, you do not have, you know, these uh, societal structures and hierarchy, all right? You know, this ladder uh, that's already in, in, in place that's been there uh, for many years. That's what you had uh, in Europe. So everything is 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 new here. Well, <clears throat> it was very difficult the first winter. Um, only forty four settlers. I, that's probably where I got forty four earlier. Uh, survived, and um, if it would had not been again for the Native Americans. All right, and corn, uh, specifically the uh, uh, Wampanoag Indians, uh, well, the settlers would not have uh, survived. And of course, this is where we get Thanksgiving, because uh, the uh, settlers um, had a big feast, uh, because they had a big crop. Um, well, in 1621, the uh, pilgrims received um, a land patent, all right, from uh, the what was called the Council of New England, all right. Um, but this is, you know, don't don't really worry about that. I mean, in other words, uh, they basically got the okay uh, to settle there. Um, the English were were happy to settle new areas. Um, eventually, though, the colony became a self-governing body. Now, of course, like I said earlier, you know, maybe maybe a little bit confused because I was talking about. Um, democracy and, and all that. I mean, that was something that was very basic in the Mayflower Compact. All right, the Mayflower Compact. They said, okay, we're going to obey God's law, but we're going to obey the laws, you know, in order to survive right here. Okay, but this again was, you know, very, you know, the Mayflower Compact was, was set a very important uh, precedent, uh, kind of a, a culture of, of democracy, you might say, a culture of uh, writing something down uh, on paper, which, you know, that culture, uh, one and some people have argued, kind of led to the written constitution. And the U.S. written constitution is probably one of the greatest contributions that um, uh, America has made uh, to the world in terms of politics and things like that. Um, all right, so I hope that that helps a little bit. The next uh, lecture is going to be on the Puritans, which is also a very important lecture, okay? And so, again, I want you to know uh, the difference... Uh, between the Puritans and uh, the Separatists. Remember, the Separatists wanted to separate from the Anglican Church, and the Puritans wanted to purify the Anglican Church. So make sure you know that, and we'll talk about that uh, in the le next lecture, and I hope uh, uh, this helps.